Good morning, everyone. Today I am going to take you on a tour of my front yard, mostly native garden beds, and show you what's in bloom. There are things that are blooming, and everything is happening so fast right now. I was hoping to do a full garden tour, but I um. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and split it up, but you'll get to see what's going on here in my front yard as far as my natives and a couple non-invasive non-natives. Of course, you'll always see my Japanese pachysandra, which I can't stand, don't ever plant Japanese pachysandra. Okay guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Michelle and I grow native plants and I garden for the wildlife. Okay, so what I really wanna focus on showing you today, the front yard garden beds, the early spring plants are starting to go over like their blooms and now we're coming up on the mid spring plants and they're just starting to look really, really good. And then up here in my front yard, I like to keep my natives as formal as I can because it's the front yard and the neighbors have to look at it. And I just, I'm always actually striving to improve the formality and the formal look of my native plants in my front yard because over time, I'd really like to build that like toolbox of native plant design and it being formal so that um, I can really push why you should plant natives and they don't have to be a big hot mess. Well, let's go ahead and get that tour started. Okay, so first up here is, oh, I forget what I call this area, but this is where I have the lance leaf fog fruit and looks like here I left some really thick leaves and it killed the grass, no big deal. But I'm currently working on getting this area prepped up. I'm going to try and remove that forsythia and I want to put a black tupelo, if that's how you pronounce it, right there. And then I have some shrubby St. John's warts in there and then that. Um, I'd like to get rid of that. This, what is this called? Lilac. Lilac. I don't know. We'll see. So then last year, if you were here with me, I did a nice edge along this bed and it looks like it needs just a little bit of a cleanup, but um, the mountain mint has come up through that heavy, heavy layer of leaves. And then we have the Christmas ferns. They seem to be spreading, which is great news. And then I don't know if you guys remember, there was a bunch of um, just naturally occurring um, Indian tobacco. And so that'll come up eventually. And then this, this grass, which I don't know what it is, but I think it's native. So let me take you over here to the ball garden right up front here one of my clients had some purple dome i think it's purple purple dome new england aster and she has a woodland garden and so she wanted to take that out and she gave it to me so i put it in here and i also added some virginia bluebells in here for next year this is japanese pachysandra don't ever plant it or you're going to be in a situation like i am where i mean i didn't plant it but I can't get rid of it. So this was the ball garden that I did last year. And so you can see the golden ragwort is starting to go over where they look like the little cotton balls. So I've really put a lot of that in here and this will just um, fill up the entire bed. And I also have blue flag iris in the middle here and there. I have some more to um, come out here that I grew from seed over the winter. The carexes are carex amphibola. Although that doesn't look like Carex Amphibola. It almost looks like the Springali. <laughs> Who knows what I planted? But anyway, I got more um, shrubby St. John's wort in here. And then the woodland phlox looking good. And then right over there, I have some obedient plant, Miss Manners. And hoping that that takes over this area here because it's wet and it is supposed to fill in quickly and then i've added just different clumps of virginia bluebell seedlings in here we come down here the the dogwood trees are looking so good right now these ones right here i inherited there's one pink and one white and they don't have the leaves on them or didn't so i don't think they're kusa hybrids i'm not 100 percent. well actually that one has leaves so i'm not sure 
anyway they look good this is a whole area where i um blew all the leaves to and i'm just kind of rewilding this area i put a little path here and then oh goodness look at this i'm gonna have to look into this this week lily of the valley super invasive it's spread everywhere I need to figure out how to get rid of it. I might have to paint it with Roundup, which I hate using Roundup, but I'm not sure if there's any other options for me. Um, so here is a whole patch of golden ragwort looking lovely. Some Carex amphibolas. Christmas fern. That's Sweet William. That is not native and I'm trying to pull it out of my yard when I can. Um, yeah, so that is a red mulberry. That's the actual native. If you look here, when you start turning things over to the woodland again, you get all sorts of nice surprising results. And that is the dog's foot, the dog tooth violet right in here. It'll take a couple years to start blooming. I didn't put it there, it just popped up. Here's where I'm putting the new woodland path. It's probably hard to see because the leaves and the wood chips are the same color, but it wants to go up through there. So obviously, uh, not only do I have to get rid of those lilies, uh, lily of the valleys because they're invasive, but also because it go in, it's going through my path. But um, I planted, that's a Maryland dwarf holly. I just moved that guy. Um, and then I planted a witch hazel right here from Fairfax Relief. And then over there is a, I will put it up on the screen. I can't remember what I planted there. Oh, well, okay. Uh, here I put a bunch of black eyed Susans in front of this, this uh, patch of bearded irises. The bearded irises I inherited. So this whole area right here is new. And let's see up here. This is where all the daffodils were blooming before. They really did look beautiful. But this is really interesting. This is kind of like a non-native feature here, but this Brennera Jack Frost looks really pretty um, as far as texture combination goes with the greenery of the daffodils. And then behind that is a, a gray owl, rest, Eastern red cedar. Here's some Bowman's root. And I put in different patches of bluebell seedlings all throughout here. And remember when I regeneratively pruned my Hypericum prolificums? Strawberry St. John's wort, look how big they are. So big. Okay. So actually, let me go ahead and take you from the front porch because it might make a little bit better sense. Okay, so this is my front porch here. And then on this side of the front porch, I have a, a dwarf rhododendron and then I line the edges to add some formality with the Carex amphibolas. This is Itea, a little Henry. It's looking beautiful. And this, I think, is something I will um, prune pretty far back after it blooms. This is not one that you cut back prior to the blooms like I did with the Hypericum prolificums. Look at that. That's a Nandina, heavenly bamboo. That is an invasive, non-native, and it's dangerous to our um, cedar waxwing. So I definitely have to get that out of there. So then I have kind of this curve of the Itea little Henry's. And then here's the gray owl. Here's another gray owl. Here's another gray owl. And then um, over on this side, I have another dwarf rhododendron. So you can see the lining of... Um, the sedges. This is a patch of the um, wild or woodland stone crop that's our native sedum. This right here is an interesting um, juniper. This is a uh, Youngstown and I bought that one because Youngstown is close to where I'm from and so I just had to have it and then when it gets cold they have a really cool reddish tint to them. So anyway I, I liked it. And then 
One, two, three. I have smooth hydrangeas. If you remember, I planted those and moved the ink berries. And then all throughout here, I have wild ginger. And I want the wild ginger to cover, totally cover the ground over here. These are dwarf winter berries. One, two, three. And then what I did is I surrounded them with nodding onion, hoping that that helps to get keep the deer off of them. And then this is a patch of um, Hookera americana, the straight species, coral bells, and looks like I accidentally <laughs> planted a tiarella here. So once that's done blooming, it will go to where I have my tiarellas. That right there is a, I think it's called Little Lemon Nine Bark, so a nine bark cultivar. Then looking down this way, hard to see with the sun. Let me go around. But anyway, here is a huge patch of golden ragwort that will all spread throughout here. In front of it on the ground is the green and gold, which y'all know I love. I have that everywhere. There's a few violets in there popping through, which um, looks pretty, but might not go with the whole scheme here. But these are all of the azaleas that I totally, totally cut all the way back. You see those dragonflies? Oh, there's okay. Oh, it's done. But anyway, totally cut those back. And the reason why I did it, because typically you would want to cut back azaleas. These aren't native azaleas, but you'd want to cut them back like right after they bloom so that you don't lose blooms for next year. But I really don't care. They're not native and I didn't want to impact and, and do if I waited to do that after they bloomed, then I could be like tearing down bird houses, which I don't want to do. So here are the three ink berries that I had transplanted from where the hydrangeas are. That back there's a little devil nine bark. And then I have here, oh, I can't remember. Royal fern or interrupted fern? Oh, royal fern. Royal fern here and there because I'm hoping that it kind of like um, masks my my rain barrel, which I don't use effectively, but anyway. Oh, and in case you're wondering, these are all um, non-native, non-native bleeding hearts that I inherited. But what I have in here are um, aromatic aster that will come up after and then this whole thing will be aromatic aster and this is also where i want to put maybe like five new jersey teas because this is really dry because of the overhang okay so yeah um okay winterberry southern gentleman and looking good it's been a couple years to make it look good and then the ink berries like we talked about and then here is the low skate mound. It's just finishing blooming and I meant to do a little feature on it and I didn't get a chance, but low skate mound, black chokeberry, Arona, uh, Aronia melanocarpa. Anyways, those looked really great. I think I'm gonna put another one right there. I took some cuttings. So yeah, I have the um, green and gold here, just looking fantastic. And hopefully I don't get that little problem that I got last year where I had, you know, circles of it die back. Um, that is the Carrick Springali and the Dwarf Fothergia. My last video, the Dwarf Fothergia was in total bloom and they didn't have the leaves and now they do and they just have such a really pretty form, don't you think? I mean, just like a nice, really, really nice shape. Yeah. So here's some more of the Jack Frost Brunner. It's not invasive, so I keep it. And it just looks really beautiful this time of year now that some of the things are starting to go over. So coming around this crepe myrtle, which, you know what, I think I'm going to plant like right next to it, maybe a um, Sweet Bay Magnolia. And then once it starts growing, then I'll have that taken out because I don't want the crepe myrtle. But anyway, here is the other dwarf fothergias. You can see one, two, three. And then in between them, I have the Maryland dwarf hollies, which will take up this whole entire area. So I have one there, there, and then on the other side of that dwarf fothergia, 
I don't know if you can see, but in that crepe myrtle, I have uh, coral honeysuckle growing up through it. What is that? Oh, okay. And, oh my goodness. I got all of my cold stratified seeds sown this weekend. Oh, I, I was just putting off and putting off doing the grasses and I finally, I got those done. I'm so happy. So anyway, look how amazing this green and gold looks. It is just a, an absolute carpet of green mulch. I, it's just, I love it. That spot and that spot's where I had that issue with it last year. But anyway, hopefully that doesn't come back. And like I always say with the um, sweet pepper bush or um, summer sweet, they are just starting to leaf out now. You always have to give them time. Don't think that they're dead. They're like one of the last things to leaf out. So yeah, this is my little area next to my garage. And then over here, this is, I don't think I did a video on this, but I've showed it before. Um, I cleaned this up right here. Um, this is, I used to get some flooding right here. So I dug this out and put in like pea gravel and all that kind of stuff. And then these rocks over top of it to make it look nice. And then I have the green and gold growing. And this area is fox sedge kind of in a circle. And I want the fox sedge to kind of like spread inward. I also have green and gold for the ground cover. And then those are cardinal flowers. So when it's in full, it's full glory, what I want this to look like is just a carpet of green and gold. And then um, these mounds of the brown fox sedge. And then the cardinal flower just um, shooting up from that. So that's the eventual, eventual goal here. And then there's a red bud right in the middle that I transplanted from elsewhere. Those are Siberian irises. And oh, this was the area that I did. I worked on, on in the spring and the fall. I've popped in bunches of Virginia bluebell seedlings that I grew from seed. And then here are the little devil nine barks. Now we'll see how they do whether the deer get them. And if you notice, these leaves are purple. Purple leaves and um, leaves that are a different color from the native may not um, continue to support the wildlife for food. Like if there was a caterpillar that um, depends, like uh, caterpillars that depend on nine bark um, as a host plant, they may not use those anymore. I mean, the blooms will still be good for the pollinators, but just know if you are planting a cultivar or something and the leaves are different from uh, the straight species that it may no longer support wildlife in the way a straight species does. So my sedges are all starting to fill in here. This right here is a line of Carex amphibola. And then behind it is the uh, the fox sedge. So right here actually is where I wanted all of the Carex infibola to grow together and then popping up through it is I have the aromatic aster. Now this area is pretty moist so it's not ideal for the aromatic aster but it's done pretty well, so I'm leaving it for now. I am going to do a hard Chelsea chop on the aromatic aster this year. Um, I saw on Facebook somewhere that um, someone, Ch Chelsea chops them really hard with good success. So I'm gonna give that an experiment this year. And oh, I've been wanting to show you guys this. Do you remember when I planted this? Um, Appalachian Springs dogwood. Planted that. Uh, my husband and I wanted to do that kind of just as an anniversary present for each other. Oh, I hate walking in this job. I think it's Cassandra. Anyway, look at those blooms. They're amazing. I'll try and um, pop up the name of the nursery I got this from. 
But remember, the Appalachian Springs is, is a Cornus, Florida that was found, I think it was Camp David, I can't remember 100%, but anyway, it was found and it is um, resistant to that um, fungus that the dogwoods get. And so, so far so good and just looking lovely. Okay, now that the sun has kind of gone behind a cloud, let me go ahead and just take you up and back so that you can see it little bit better this whole section will look a little bit better when these azaleas um, leaf out again you guys remember I think my fox lives there Well, there's a nice patch of the ginger. And look how nice the shape of the Carex amphibola with the shape of the ginger leaves contrast. Okay. So here we go. And back down. Don't plant the pack of Sandra. Remember, I'm totally accepting of a GoFundMe to get rid of this. <laughs> okay, so, oh, let me just show you this. Okay, so over here, um, I have a little patch of bottle brush grass, which I wasn't liking and now I'm starting to like. So I'm letting that spread here and then down the edge of my driveway. I have Carex Blanda. So I had Carex Blanda lining this and it hasn't really taken off the way I wanted it to or isn't really looking the way I wanted it to like my other Carexes look like over on that side. So what I did is I started um, grabbing little cuttings of green and gold and putting those against the driveway. So that's doing well. And then I thought this was kind of cute idea is I also put them between the stepping stones. We're really close to our neighbors over there, meaning like friendship wise. And so what I did is I have these here because the kids are always going back and forth. So put the little stepping stones here and then in between the stepping stones, I put the green and gold. And I've also transplanted some little violets over there too. So I really like the look of that. And then in here I have, which you'll see later um, as the season progresses, but I have um, whitewood aster, woodland um, goldenrod. So I think I have blue stem and zigzag, I'm not 100% in here. Those hostas will be eaten down to little toothpicks by the deer. I didn't put them there, the previous owners did. And I'm doing a patch of, some patches actually of bottle brush grass because I just think it would look really pretty just to have it, you know, flowing with the bottle brush grass. And then we have um, a service berry. Here's a volunteer hickory that I'm probably gonna have to remove. I'm protecting a red bud in here. And this is mountain mint. And then the green and gold. We'll see what comes up here. I planted some in, uh, wild blue indigo, it might be yellow. I don't know, I got the seeds mixed up. Anyway, I planted some of that in here and some other um, dry, this is super dry because of my uh, these oak trees. But I um, put in some dry loving type plants in here. So we'll see what comes back this year. Right there, I'm really loving these and the deer have stayed off of them so far. Actually better spray them today. But this is Northern Bush Honeysuckle. So it's a bush honeysuckle, not like the invasive types of honeysuckle. It's native. So this one, this one, and there's a little cutting that I took and I was worried because I only plant in odd numbers and then I, you know, shoved this in the ground last year and it's starting to come. So that's great. So I have a group of three bush honeysuckle there. So excited about that. What else is over here? Oh, this little section is always experimental because there's like 
this is so dry. Right in this area is like even drier than that area. So I have a lot of the um, green and gold spreading, which is looking good. But this right here is finally looking good after two years or yeah, two years. This is side oats gamma. Side oats gamma or grandma? I can't remember. Anyway, I have like like seven of them in here. And then I also put in our woodland sedum stone crop in there too. And then just, I let the uh, violets stay. So that's that. We'll see if that will finally work in this little area here, just kind of different from the rest. Um, I put some, oops, let me move. Some geraniums, some native geraniums here. I grew them from seed and they were over on the side of the house and they were just surviving in their little pots for like two or three years. So I don't know. So what will probably happen eventually is I will get rid of the Carex Blanda going down this line because it's just not providing that formal look like you guys know I like in the front yard and just do all green and gold um, down through here. I think that'll look really pretty eventually. Um, and you, cause you can see kind of the border. It's really, you know, looking nice and stuff with that green and gold and it's semi evergreen. So let me just show you up here. All the trees are letting their, um, I can't remember the name of these things down. So it looks a little messy, but over here is my native strawberry. I have gray dogwoods. I'm doing an experiment. I can't remember if I put it on the video or not, but this gray dogwood, I did not cut back. And then I cut back really hard that one and that one because I kind of want to control its size because they're supposed to get really big. But also I want in the winter, the really bright red stems and you get that with the new stems and then i have it interplanted with mountain mint to keep the deer off of it you can see that so that'll all fill in with the mountain mint all around and then i really like how the strawberry is doing on the edge too that's um the only thing with edging with with uh native strawberry is it does jump into your yard that's why i don't have it like in other beds on the edges and then Let's see, that should be Virginia creeper. I was trying to get it to go up here. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, yeah, oh, I had, I think it was a red spotted purple on this wild cherry. I'll, I'll do a Facebook post about him because I did a photo shoot with him. But anyway, um, that was fun to watch over a couple days. Oh, I just planted three nine barks right there. I got those from Fairfax Relief. Thank you very much. They um, give free trees and shrubs. And then let's see. Okay, I gotta cut back some of these because down here I have um, yellow wild indigo. One here, one there, and one there. And then back there, we'll look at this more um, later, but I have spike nard and winter berries this is like one of those things you know where i talk about all the time right plant right place the winter berries i planted there when i didn't know anything and it's really dry over here so um, i've really had to kind of baby them to get them you know to keep the deer off of them and to you know keep them in water and i think now that they have a good root system they should be fine but over here i have tons of um uh, sunny plants, um, pollinator plants over here right next to the vegetable and cutting garden. There's a little preview of the hummingbird garden, which is to, I will show you that another time. These non-native azaleas are blooming. Again, I keep these in my landscape because the deer eat them. And if the deer are going to eat those instead of my native stuff, then we're just gonna go ahead with that. Oh, do you see the Virginia creeper back there? Virginia creeper, I love Virginia creeper. I don't react to it. I know some people do, just as an FYI. And then I have um, foxglove, beard tongue there, and there's symbol weed back there. So when, when these things are blooming, I'll be showing you more of that. I'm just trying to kind of like feature the things that are blooming more than anything else. 
Oh, I will show you this just in case they start going over. This is like one of my favorite views in the spring and it's the woodland. What is she doing? Hold on. Let's go get out. No girl. Mm. So right here, the woodland flocks full bloom looking absolutely gorgeous. I love these. And remember, after they bloom, they kind of die back, except for the brand new greenery. So it almost looks like your phlox isn't doing well, but it is. So if you kind of see that happen, just know that um, it's kind of semi-ephemeral. So here's this beautiful view right here. Okay guys, so if this is content that appeals to you, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and watch my playlist and watch some of my other videos. I will actually link here to one of my most recent garden tours where I'm going to talk about flowers that are blooming more, more in early spring um, as opposed to some of the mid-spring um, plants we were talking about today. So that's it for today. Thank you for taking your time and watching my video. Happy gardening and I will catch you again next time.